Welcome back to the Traders Network Show, broadcasting worldwide from Davos, Switzerland. I'm Matt Bird. We're here at the 2020 World Economic Forum, and I'm sitting in the SDG Media Zone with the man responsible for it, the Chief Communication Officer for the UN Global Compact, Dan Thomas. Dan, Hi. welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. So we've known each other for, for some time now. Um, I've been fortunate to see and witness the growth and evolution of the, SD, the SDG Media Zone. And your fingerprints are all over it. And, and you've got your hand in the growth of this thing. Um, and it's, it's proliferated through publishers, through networks, through impact circles globally. Um, can you tell us, give us a little bit of an update of kind of what's been happening? Well, I mean, the, the idea of the SDG Media Zone was to really take the conversations that we were having at the United Nations, and also in places like this, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, uh, uh, to take it out to a global audience. There's lots of people who aren't in Davos who are very interested in the sustainable development goals and interested in the conversations that the UN's having with business leaders, with other leaders, civil society leaders, about the future of the world's economy and about this, this global universal agenda that we're challenging you know, in the case of the UN Global Compact, we're challenging business leaders to be more ambitious around this, uh, this agenda and really drive action in the next 10 years, which we're calling the decade of action. No, I like that. One of the things I like most about um, the SDGs is it, it generates this feeling of sentiment. And when the first media zone popped up, I think 2017, 2016, 2015, yeah. um, it was for the first time you had thought leaders and celebrities and CEOs descending down into an environment where people can almost feel and touch them. And it made it real. Instead of watching it from afar in one of the major rooms, how does that play a role, um, the interaction, you know, being so close in the people and in, 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 in the whole environment? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always been a live space in the sense that we've had a live audience as well as a global audience watching on, on uh, web TV dot uh, un dot org a large global audience uh, online um, but really the idea of having the live audience was to make it more of a conversation more intimate even to take questions from the live audience to try and prompt you know a very important discussion around this agenda and how people are uh, tackling the various goals and how they're advancing uh, their mission do you have any aspects of what you're doing now that is your favorite the things that you really focus on well, uh, we, we cover the full agenda. Um, the, the other important part of it is the social media part. Um, we created it really at the UN because the UN wouldn't allow the social media right. journalists right. and actors to come in and cover what was happening at the UN. And they weren't considered journalists and therefore they were kept out. We created the SDG Media Zone as a Trojan horse, if you like, to get them in, to get them into the UN, to let them p be part of the discussion and then, of course, we wanted their audience, you know, all of these social media journalists and types, they have huge audiences. So we wanted to use them to get the world out. So they're the, they're the sort of transmitters of the conversations that we're having here, as well as the, uh, the webcast. Did you expect for the growth to happen so quickly? Well, I think, um, I think it was a, a, an idea of its time. It came at the beginning of this agenda in 2015. Uh, now we're five years in, and Still, the global goals aren't well known enough. Still, we're trying to educate people about what these goals are, what they represent. Uh, and we're only 10 years to go before we've got to hit the deadline. The target is 2020, uh, 2030. And so now, in 2020, we're entering this decade of action. Right. And we're asking all businesses, but actually everybody, to really step up with ambition. Because uh, we're not going to create the world we want unless we really uh, step on the gas. You know, um, I'm familiar with the, obviously the Global Compact, and we we spent a number of years together working on it, impact initiatives, and and uh, I have a number of organizations that I'm very well integrated with that are part of the Global Compact. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Global Compact, what it is? Um, you know, as I'm out there, I find companies wanting to know more. It's just it's there's a lot of gravitas to it. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of things involved. But really, what is the Global Compact? The Global Compact was created uh, 20 years ago. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. It was created by the Secretary General, Kofi Annan, who came to Davos and actually challenged companies to create a global compact between the member states of the United Nations and the world of the private sector in order to put a human face on globalization. It was a challenge that he laid out here 
at the World Economic Forum in Davos. And immediately companies realized the sense of what he was talking about. The idea that businesses had uh, a role to play in society broadly, not just uh, making profits for themselves, but actually taking care of the staff. And uh, he asked them to sign up to 10 principles, principles based on UN uh, uh, conventions around human rights and labor rights, protecting the environment, and crucially not being corrupt. And so he asked CEOs to take up these 10 principles. And that's what we've done for the last 20 years. We've grown from 44 original companies that immediately signed up to 10,000 companies and another 3,000 uh, other organizations and associations. So we're now the world's largest corporate sustainability movement. Uh, we're 20 years in. We've got 10 years to achieve this uh, agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals. And, uh, and uh, a very impatient uh, world that needs a, a real transition to the world that we all want. I'm not gonna try to throw you a, 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 a hard, hard picture, but for the audience watching, what are the Sustainable Development Goals and what does hitting those goals in 2030 mean? Well, this is, uh, this is a, an agenda that 193 heads of state, 193 governments agreed on in 2015 at the United Nations. It's an agenda that uh, is intended to transform the world, to make it more sustainable, lift people out of poverty, and create uh, peace and justice in the world for everybody. There are 17 goals. A lot of them, uh, uh, they're all interconnected. Here they are behind us, all 17 of the goals. It's a very, uh, it's a very sort of complex tapestry, if you like, of, of interconnecting goals. And what we're finding is that the business community in particular, they see the value of these goals clearly articulated by governments uh, with a 15-year uh, agenda, a 15-year um, target. And then behind these 17 goals, there's actually 169 targets. So go uh, companies, they, uh, they fully understand a, a clear plan. This is a clear plan. Uh, the business uh, community has uh, embraced this plan for themselves because they understand their responsibility to uh, uh, be good actors in society. And we're finding, uh, we're finding that this is a, a roadmap which the, uh, the private sector is finding extremely useful. And, uh, and we're pushing them to be more ambitious in helping us to achieve the, uh, the agenda. You know, when I, people have asked me, what, what are the SDGs? And, and using a roadmap to get there is a great explanation of the, the activities that need to be done. But <clears throat> I look at the end product as being a good individual and corporate global citizen. And, uh, and that means all aspects of our life from, you know, from humanitarian to equality to, um, this is in every language except for English. <laughs> stopping, stopping hunger in the world, uh, you know, making sure that people have the opportunity of good health and well-being. Uh, people are taking climate action. I mean, as you can tell, a lot of these goals are very cross-cutting. I mean, we're not going to achieve the world we want, a more sustainable world, if we don't, uh, if we don't address climate change. Mm -hmm. That is one of the priorities. But at the same time, if we don't target gender equality as well, then we're not going to achieve the world we want because we'll be not taking advantage of you know, half the population that we actually need to be part of this global agenda. So targeting gender equality uh, is, is another important goal, cross-cutting. Uh, education. Hugely important. Make sure that you know future generations have the opportunity of education. Uh, we don't want to leave anyone behind. That's the idea. Either behind because they're not educated, behind because they're you know living in poverty. Uh, the world has enough resources for all of the population in it. Uh, it's just a question of uh, organizing ourselves as a society, as a world society, to make sure that uh, everybody can enjoy the, the the benefits of the world that we have without destroying the planet. Uh, that's, that's excellent, well and well said. Uh, I know it's, it, we're getting the wee hours of the day here on day three in Davos, so I'm, I'm gonna let you go here. I guess, let's, let's leave this with, there's a big milestone coming up here this year. Um, do you wanna tell everybody about what's come, happening this summer? Uh, well, we're, we're working towards a leaders summit. We're gonna be inviting uh, 100 and, uh, 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 sorry, uh, CEOs from 168 countries to the uh, UN in New York. The United Nations General Assembly will have uh, about 1,500 business leaders and CEOs uh, at the UN on the 15th of June. And then the next day, we've booked the Javits Center. We'll be moving 
to the Javits Center with a big exhibition, opportunities for the private sector to come in and, uh, and, and uh, you know, exhibit the work that they're doing on this agenda, and a chance for us to really engage CEOs around the world in, uh, in driving this agenda with more ambition. That's amazing. And this is the Big 20. Yep, the 20th anniversary of the Global Compact. We're just getting started, but at the same time, we've stuck with our principles. We haven't changed them. Principles don't go out of fashion. Mm. And these principles, if they're followed by business, can actually achieve this agenda and achieve a lot more in the years beyond 2030. Well, I think you made to say Billy fashionable. So congratulations, Dan. Dan Thomas, Chief Communication Officer for the UN Global Compact. I'm Matt Bird. You're watching Traders Network Show on the Equities Network.